Hi, and welcome to Thoughts for Today and Words for the Week. During the course of my pastorate, one of the top things that I've discovered that's difficult for followers of Jesus and disciples of Christ is the kingdom principle of forgiveness. Do I have to forgive everyone? Do I have to forgive everyone of everything they've ever done to me? Forgiveness really goes against our nature, our grain, because when we're hurt, we want somebody to pay for it, pay the consequences. I've come to see forgiveness like all other positive aspects of kingdom living, uh, that, in that it simply requires fine tuning. We don't turn into forgiving, merciful, gracious individuals overnight or with uh, the touch of a magic wand, but rather it comes in our daily living as we encounter folks around us that require that we forgive them. It's just a part of our relationships with each other. It's a part of the reality of life. And so I trust that you'll see thoughts for today and words for this week as words of encouragement in developing the kingdom principle of forgiveness as we seek to become more and more like Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful Father, we're thankful that your mercy is higher than the heavens, wider than our wanderings, deeper than all our sin and shortcomings, our selfishness and self-centeredness. As we come together now, we praise you and adore you, O God, for not leaving us to ourselves and our wayward ways, but always waiting to welcome us home and keep us connected to you through Jesus, who understood our predicament and pays our debt when it comes to sin. May this time of reflection and meditation and the service of our lives be a doxology that continues in the days ahead as we live by the kingdom principles of love and forgiveness to all who cross our path. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In order to focus our thoughts today, uh, we read from Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. Then Peter came to him, him being Jesus, and asked, Lord, how many times should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? No, not seven times, Jesus replied, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date and servants who had borrowed money from him. In the process, one of the debtors who was brought in owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay. So the master ordered that he be sold along with his wife, his children, and everything that he owned to pay the debt. But the man fell on his knees before his master and begged him, please be patient with me and I will pay it all. Then his master was filled with pity for him and he released him and forgave the debt. But when the man left the king, he went to his fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. He grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. Be patient with me and I will pay it back, he pleaded. But his creditor wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be tortured until he had paid his entire debt. That's what my heavenly father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. Let us pray. God of all heaven and earth, we call on you because you hear us, you listen to us, and your answers come from your wisdom, for your ways and your thoughts are higher than ours. 
And so we trust, O oh Lord, we put our faith, however small, even the size of a mustard seed, in you. For in you alone are the Lord our God. So we humbly pray now in Jesus' name, laying before you our cares, our concerns, our anxieties and fears, asking only that you meet them in your way. Lord, there seems to be powers at work against us and all humanity seeking to rob us of the basic security that makes life possible without chaos, fear, or danger. These powers of the world are, are bent on taking away our well-being. There are forces of division that set us apart and against each other, exploiting situations to benefit a few instead of all of us. And so, Lord, we seek your peace in these days that feel so insecure and uncertain. We pray that your presence would abide in our lives so that uh, we might be able to live more faithfully and with, with confidence. Lord, we know that you and you alone are in charge and have our best interests in mind. And so we lean, we lean on you. We lean into you, O Lord. Strengthen us, O Lord, to be people of strong faith and loving action that identifies with the weak, the struggling, the disadvantaged, those who hurt, just like Jesus touched those in his ministry. May we be able to replicate his compassion and care for a broken and hurting world. Empower us to use our gifts to the advantage of others and advancing your kingdom rule of love and forgiveness, mercy and grace. Lord, as we have been blessed, may we be a blessing to those who we find around us that are struggling with life, where life seems to be an uphill battle. For all who hurt, ache, and suffer, we ask your touches of health and well-being. For those who are victims of hatred and violence, we pray your consolation, healing, and hope. For those who are living near the end and their families that are there for them, we ask that your resurrection hope would abide. Lord, we pray that you would drive away everything that seeks to take away life and send forth your healing presence, power, and peace. Lord, let the whole world know your grace, for you alone are sovereign of all. And we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Does God ever run out of forgiveness? Is there a limit to God's forgiveness? Is it like your bank account? Uh, once it's all spent, once it's all gone, it's, it's gone for good and there's no more to be had? Well, if you're like me, you hope not. You hope God never runs out of forgiveness. Otherwise, I'm in big trouble and I suspect you might be too. But how about you and me? Do we run out of forgiveness? Now that's more of a real possibility. And yet, the people around you the people that live with you and me day in and day out hope that we don't run out of, hot, out of forgiveness, especially our, our children, our spouse, our friends, our neighbors. Uh, we know that there has to be some level of forgiveness or no relationship can exist very long. Uh, just think back to your growing up years and how many times your, your mom and your dad had to had to forgive you because you'd done something. And this rolls over into our young adult lives as we have friends. It rolls over into our lives as we marry and uh, are in, our, in the youth and, and, and any stage of our lives because inevitably we're gonna wrong someone, hurt someone, mistreat someone, say something that we shouldn't have said, done something we, we regret. Forgiveness is tough, and I 
suspect that we all need to be reminded that it's a kingdom principle, a kingdom value. It's what makes the life of followers of Jesus and disciples of Christ different because you and I are called to live differently, to be different in the world. And so that's the reason for another message on forgiveness. Just because it's tough, because it's hard work, just because we need uh, to be reminded that that's a part of who we are as followers of Jesus. Let's be honest. I've messed up, you've messed up. In fact, I'm convinced that uh, you and I probably can do a pretty good job of messing up. Uh, we've got mess ups in life down pretty, pretty well. Uh, we can hurt others intentionally because we're mad, because we're threatened, because we're fearful, or we just wanna get even because they've done something to us and it's not fair. Uh, or we just kind of consider folks below us and so we treat them poorly and perhaps hurt them by looking down with them. Uh, sometimes we're just flat bullies and mean-spirited. And so we end up hurting someone, hurting someone's feelings, uh, hurting them hopefully not physically and emotionally, but sometimes that, that can happen. And sometimes things just happen unintentionally. We did something without thinking and went through the, all, and, and now we're having to deal with the consequences. And of course, stuff just happens. Accidents just happen. Uh, there's car insurances now that offer forgiveness coverage just in case you have an accident. Your premium doesn't go, go up, even if it's your own fault. Needless to say, there are negative sides to not forgiving. Anne Lamott likes to say, Refusing to forgive is like eating rat poison and waiting for the rat to die. What really happens is that you slowly die from uh, not wanting to forgive and it eats you up from the inside out. The positive side though of for forgiving is when you've experienced forgiveness, you're, you're more inclined to be uh, more compassionate and forgiving. At least I trust that's the case in contrast to the scripture that we read today. The guy in the parable is not someone we want to emulate. The one you want to emulate is the one that's telling the story. The one who dies on the cross to pay the debt for our sins. In a word, the one who makes forgiveness possible. So what can come out of forgiveness? First and foremost, compassion. Hopefully, in contrast to the text, we are a little bit more loving, compassionate, and forgiving because, after all, we're in the same sinking boat without the forgiveness of God. Now, Jesus is telling this story, and the story, this parable, is a hyperbole. In other words, uh, some of the story is exaggerated in order to get, get the point across. And so Jesus is telling the story of these two debtors. Uh, and the truth is one of them owes a bazillion dollars, money like uh, Bezos and Gates and Musk kind of money. And the other person just pennies, just pennies in comparison. And while the guy is a bazillion, bazillion dollars in debt, ought to be a little bit more compassionate and forgiving, he simply isn't. He is mean-spirited. He's trying to get blood out of a turnip and he's really just trying to uh, uh, get even and get back. And yet while he has been forgiven, he is not so willing to forgive. The idea is to be just a bit more compassionate when it comes uh, to knowing that we don't deserve to be forgiven when indeed we are forgiven. Henry Nouwen wrote, Forgiveness is the name of love. Forgiveness is the name of love practiced among people who love poorly. The hard truth is that all people love poorly. And so we need to forgive and be forgiven every day, every hour increasingly. Forgiveness is the great work of love among the fellowship of the weak. That is the human family. 
Have you ever been pulled over by a police officer after knowingly speeding or running a stop sign only to be given a warning? I have to admit it's happened to me and gee, afterwards, I, 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 I feel a little bit more compassionate for, for folks around me, at least for a little while, in knowing that, that I've received mercy and grace, that I've received forgiveness. Now, this may not be the perfect example, but it, it sure comes close to, to knowing that I can be a little bit different towards others because someone's let me off the hook, if only for a brief moment. But way too many people, guilt-stricken, wounded, walk in regret, feeling bad about failing, apologizing even for breathing, but with forgiveness. The raw belief, a passion for others, grows in me, encircling each moment with instinctive prayer. I will carry the freshness of the dry lands after rain. Compassion lives in me again. So are the words that I've read from Northumbria uh, faith community in Ireland. As I've thought about this parable, it strikes me that there's really a, a trickle-down effect of forgiveness. At least that's what God desires. As we are forgiven, we too are to be forgiving and become forgiving at least and to become forgiving at least a little bit more as we, we journey through life. And certainly it's something we do have to practice at daily so that it becomes a part of our being. Not to carry a grudge, not to be ugly, not to want to get even, but rather, especially as people come to us asking for forgiveness, to be forgiving. But even when they don't, at least begin to have the spirit of forgiving. It's not just forgiving once that really is here. It's, <clears throat> it's not forgiving once that's really the issue here, but, but staying forgiving uh, in the sense of like our, our breathing. Because it's only after 77 times do you and I maybe begin to comprehend how infinitely you and I are actually forgiven. Have you ever forgiven someone 77 times? A friend? a child, uh, maybe even yourself. Sometimes we have to forgive ourselves. Do you wonder where the 77 comes from? Well, there was an Old Testament fellow by the name of Lamech who brags that if uh, Cain could avenge seven times after he had uh, killed his brother Abel and was on the run and was afraid and was given some, some sense of revenge, if he could do it for seven times, Lamech thought he could do it for 77 times. So Jesus seems to be in this parable reversing the revenge factor of Lamech to the forgiveness factor, the forgiveness factor of 77. Now just for a moment consider, how many times have you said the Lord's Prayer? I suspect it's more than 77 times probably more like a bazillion times. But in that prayer are these words, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In the Bambia tribe of Southern Africa, uh, actually in Zambia, when a person acts irresponsibly or unjustly, he is placed in the center of the village alone and unchained, just set out in the center of, of the village. And all work stops. Everyone, every man, woman, and child comes and circles around uh, this accused individual for whatever he's done. And then each person in the trial tribe uh, begins to speak to the accused individual one at a time, each recalling not the incident, but the good things that the person in the center of the circle has actually done in his lifetime. All of his positive attributes, good deeds, strengths, kindnesses are spoken carefully and deliberately 
and at length. The tribal ceremony may take several days to accomplish, but at the end, the tribal circle is broken, a joyous celebration takes place, and the person is symbolically and literally welcomed back into the tribe. An interesting practice, isn't it? For all the bad and ugly we see in someone else's life when they've hurt us and mistreated us and treated us poorly, done us wrong, and left us with the repercussions of the D that's hurt us, maybe, just maybe, if we could begin to see the good in that person and begin to focus there, then maybe, just maybe, forgiveness could begin to happen. And as we forgive, the person whom we think has hurt us can be relieved of their debt to us so that they can, out of love, compassion, and forgiveness that they've received, pass it on to someone else who owes them. It begins to trickle down, just like God's forgiveness does for you and me. Trickle down forgiveness, which floods one with new life and then another. Let us pray. Lord, we do thank you for forgiving us, for we know that in our own ways we've, we've missed the mark. We've failed you, we've failed others, we've hurt you, we've hurt others, sometimes out of our own ignorance and accidentally, unintentionally, and at other times just out of spite and being mean-spirited. Uh, irrespective of the reasons, O oh Lord, we are standing in the need of forgiveness. We thank you, O oh Lord, that over and over again, uh, your forgiveness is there for us. Not as something to be taken lightly, but rather to be received uh, with a desire to, to live better, to trust you more, and to walk more uh, by the basis of the kingdom principle, to be more forgiving. Lord, during the course of this week, as we encounter hurts, as, as we encounter those things, those events that uh, leave us feeling hurt, uh, others who've done us wrong, may we uh, use these thoughts, these words of the week, to help us uh, be more forgiving and help us to remember that your forgiveness trickles down through our lives to others. In Jesus' name, who died to forgive us of our sins by paying our debt, we pray. Amen. The Lord, the Lord bless you with a great week. Stay safe, and we'll see you soon. Blessings.